Every good story starts with a monkey, especially a messy one. Meet Walto. He's a monkey. 12 years ago, this monkey grabbed a camera and took this epic selfie. He took it in the middle of the jungle. This photo session was orchestrated by David Slater, a British nature photographer for his book Wildlife Personalities. Naruto's selfie made it to publications all around the world, causing a large steal, but it was the copyright office that got the most worked up. The legal battle that followed set a precedent that defined how copyright law works for AI art today, and that's what this video is all about. So let's get started. Flashback to 12 years ago, when David Slater, a British photographer, traveled to Indonesia with the intention of capturing some truly unique pictures of wildlife. He set up his camera in a place where the monkeys were likely to discover it and even possibly press the shutter. This curious strategy led to Naruto, the photogenic monkey, seizing the opportunity and snapping an iconic photo. The photo became an instant sensation, traveling across the web at an impressive speed. Yet, amidst the excitement, a fascinating debate started to take shape. Slater and his company had copyrighted the photo and published a book with the photo featured, even though Slater openly stated that the monkey, not he, took the picture. This is where PETA, or the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, come in. They made the argument that since Naruto, the macaque, was the one who physically took the photo, the copyright should rightfully belong to him. Peter utilized something known as the Next Friend Clause of Copyright Law. This clause typically allows someone to bring forth a lawsuit on behalf of someone else who is incapable of doing it themselves. It's usually reserved to minors, those who are mentally incapacitated or the deceased. But in this case, Peter was using it for a monkey, advocating that the copyright should be assigned to Naruto. Although it was clear Peter was capitalizing on the publicity the situation brought, it did spark intriguing discussions about the nature of copyright. The court ended up ruling in favor of David Slater, finding that animals cannot hold copyright since they don't have authorship, indirectly implying that only a human who intentionally created a piece of art can hold copyright. The copyright law hinges on authorship. Did a human intentionally manipulate the medium to create a work? If the work was created by mistake, has no authorship or intention, it cannot be copyrighted. Well, what does that story have to do with copyright in AI-generated art? Well, let's take Zaya of the Dawn, a comic book with images generated by Midjourney and AI generator. Chris Kashtanova, the author of the book, who spent months working on her book, perfecting the images, writing elaborate prompts, and perfecting the story, wanted to copyright her work. After months of debate, the US trademark office decided that the book itself was copyrightable, but the individual images were not, and since they were produced by an AI art and not a human artist. Even though if Chris wouldn't have told that the images were generated by AI, nobody would knew. English or do you speak it? But what happens when we venture into more complex artworks that involve intricate base sketches and AI manipulations? Like take for example uh, ControlNet, a tool that allows an artist to direct AI images with sketches, depth maps, and other guiding factors. This blues the lines of authorship. It's a frontier area in copyright law where the idea of intention, creativity, and human involvement are being challenged and redefined. What we know so far is that the human-generated work that includes AI-generated components is fully copyrightable. However, what is the human-generated work? Is writing a prompt? A human generated work is drawing a sketch that then the AI generates an image on human generated work, is generating five images and combining them in Photoshop, human generated work, or AI generated work. We also keep hearing about AI art being trained on stolen works by real artists. But the way AI generators work is by using billions of pieces of images, not copying them verbatim. So the resulting art is more like tracing millions of other pictures to create a picture of your own. You cannot get somebody's style or components without using uh, the name in the prompt, basically attributing them in a way. And despite copyright law not considering this that, the newer generation of AI generators are a lot more aware of where this data comes from. Stable Diffusion, for example, visibly trained the model on Getty Images and the white stock image dataset. Even to a point where Stable Diffusion sometimes generates images with Getty Images logo overlaid on the generated image. And they are being sued over this right now. On the other hand, 
Adobe's Firefly is trained only on stock images that Adobe has legal access to because they'll have their own stock image database. And Stable Diffusion, learning from their own mistakes, are using a public dataset and made it very easy to see and review which images are part of the dataset and request images to be removed. And in fact, so far, artists have removed over 80 million images from the dataset. By the way, check out the link in the description below to see if maybe you've been part or some of your images have been uh, used to train an AI and also to remove an image if you don't want it done. Ultimately, what truly matters is the art itself, not the medium to which it's created. Just as 3D animation has allowed us to tell more immersive stories in movies, AI-generated images and videos are simply an evolution of that. The AI becomes another tool in the artist's toolkit, its utility inspired by existing mediums. What truly matters is the message the artist intended to convey, not the medium by which it was conveyed. After all, when Andy Warhol transformed everyday objects like the Campbell's soup cans or the Coca-Cola bottles, we didn't say he stole the design or infringed on copyright. Instead, we call it art and we exhibit it in museums. The attribution and compensation issues still linger, but these are merely the teething problems of a new technology that we are yet to fully resolve. Basically, AI is a teenager now. It's large enough to reach out and impact our life, but it's not mature enough to solve these problems. And what happened to Naruto and David? Well, David Slater won the case and committed to donate funds from the sales of the photo to monkey shelters. Unfortunately, when Wikimedia published the photo in Wikipedia, Slater asked to remove it because he is the copyright holder. However, since the copyright actually is not clear, Wikimedia refused, coincidentally making the photo a public domain photo, preventing David from making almost any money on the photo. Naruto, on the other hand, is still alive and well in Indonesia, not being aware of the copyright mess he has caused or what the heck is AI art to begin with? Right, I hope you learned something from this video about AI art and copyright. Be sure to visit our Discord community and share the most amazing things you can make with this and other algorithms. I would love to hear what is your opinion. Is AI art stolen art? Is that the future? Or is the medium that allows you to be more creative? Speaking of algorithms, be sure to like this video, subscribe, let the YouTube algorithm know that more people should see this video. Until next time, see you in another digital life hack. Bye bye.